Um, so one more thing before I go. Um, you got to be careful what kind of jokes you make to me. Um, a couple, it's been two years ago now, uh, a young man uh, was kind of joking with me on Wednesday night. I teach the youth group on Wednesday night, um, or have for the last couple of years. A uh, young man was like, hey, hey Mike, when, can I preach this Sunday? And I said, well, not this Sunday, but we'll do some work and you can preach. And he was like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I could actually like preach? And I said, well, is that something that like God is leading you to do? And he's like, I don't know, it's kind of a joke, but maybe he is. Um, and so that started kind of a two-year process, uh, some false starts. We, we wrote a sermon and we threw it all away and a year in, and then we took some time off and then we picked it back up again. Um, so I don't know if you can tell by like our facilities and the state that we're in right now, uh, the Christian life is under construction. <laughs> um, and so uh, I'm honored uh, to invite Logan, uh, who may or may not have disappeared. Uh, there he is. <laughs> I'm honored to invite Logan this morning to the platform. Um, he's studied not only the verses that, um, that he's going to be bringing to you, but he studied all of Second Peter um, as part of his homework and I think has done an incredible job um, putting together and trying to prepare um, and really like seeking Jesus and how, um, how he might lead us in, in um, the proclamation of God's word today. Um, and so I know uh, that you guys are great and, and forgiving. You've already demonstrated your graciousness this morning. So they're all warmed up with grace for you, buddy. So. All right, well, we haven't met yet. My name's Logan, as y'all know. For, so, for those of you who don't know, I have uh, six brothers and one sister. And unfortunately, I just happen to be the oldest of all of them. And so throughout my life, I've been changing a lot of diapers, picked up a lot of throw up, cleaned up a lot of toys and all that. And something that you learn as you do these things and as you walk with these kids and as you teach them, that you learn that they're kind of useless. <laughs> and <laughs> you just learn that they can't do anything by themselves. Now they're great, they're cute sometimes, but they're useless, right? And what I'd like to tell you all today and explain to you all today is some of us in this room are babies ourselves. Some of us are useless. So if you'd like, let's just bow our hearts and we're going to start tradition as Neighborhood Church to say the Disciples' Prayer. So. Yeah. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, cool. We're going to go to the very back of the Bible. Um, we're going to go to Second Peter. If you want to grab one of those blue Bibles that's in your chair in front or behind you, it is going to be on page 1,263. 1,263. And it's going to be on the left side at the bottom. We're starting in chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers in the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed 
from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this there, there, way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. Though you know them and are established in the truth that, that you have, I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder. So I know that the putting off my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. Now I'll make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able to at any time recall these things. So first off, let's talk about who Simon Peter was. He was one of the apostles who walked with Jesus, and he was pretty close. I mean, after Jesus left the earth, he put Simon Peter in charge of the church that was there. And so he's a pretty good source of our knowledge that we want to talk about. Um, so yeah. So let's go back into verse 1. Starting at the beginning. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and our Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness to the knowledge of him who has called to us his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers in the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is of the world because of sinful desire. So he's saying here that God has already given us everything that we need. So is there anyone here that likes cooking? Anyone at all? Yeah? All right, well, I want you to imagine, like, you, there's a dish you've never cooked before. And the first thing you do, the first thing you might do is look up a recipe, right? Because if you're like me, you have to follow a recipe in order to be right. And if you don't, it just everything goes wrong. So you follow this recipe, and it tells you every, every ingredient you need. So you go out and you buy every single ingredient you need. You have the recipe of every temperature, everything, you, just every single thing you need. Your kitchen is full. And all you need to do in order to do this just good is to follow the recipe. So... Peter is saying that it's the same way with God, right? He's saying in verse 3, or sorry, he's saying in yeah, verse 3, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. And so he's telling us here that God has already given us our kitchen, our recipe, our ingredients. Everything is here already, and we just need to put them to use. So, if you read verse 4, he says, by which he, has granted a, to, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through, through them you may become partakers in the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is of the world. We're escaped from the sin of the world through God. He's telling us that God is the source of peace. God is the recipe that is given to us. So that brings up the question, like, am I trusting God with my needs? Do I trust that he's given me everything I need already? Do I know that my kitchen's full? Let's go into verse 5. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge of self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying here that being a Christian or having faith is not just a one-step process. So is there anyone here that likes sports or played sports growing up or anything in particular? Well, a sport that I enjoy playing is basketball, right? 
And the thing is that when you start a sport, when you start anything in particular, you start off pretty bad. You start off as a rookie, okay? Like, so when I, like, when I started playing basketball, I wasn't going for half court shots or you know, cross people up in the court or whatever. I was shooting layups. Now mind, I was better than Riley, but <laughs> that's besides the point, right? And Peter's saying exactly that. Faith is the same way, and it's a process. And he says, verse 5, 5 through 7, For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. So where does he say to start? Well, at first, he says you have to have faith. He says, make every effort to supplement your faith. So to start, you need your faith. You need the faith in God. So after that, you supplement your faith with virtue, right? And virtue with knowledge. So after, after, no, after having faith, you have to understand what it's saying. You have to know what, the, like what you need to know. And he goes on, the knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness. So he's telling you, after you have faith, be holy. Be separate from the world. So yeah, you start with faith. You supplement that with holiness. And then he goes on to say, and godliness for brotherly affection. And this is where it gets hard. He goes on, after you have this holiness, after you have faith and holiness, you have to start actually liking people, right? And that, that part's hard, okay? But then he goes even further, and he says, in brotherly affection, something your brotherly affection with love. So you, you don't start loving people. You start off with faith, and you progress. You get better, and then you end up loving people, right? And if loving people is this final step, then what is love then? Do you, like, we, then it brings the question, what is love? And if you're interesting, interested in hearing more about that, you should read uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not boast, love does not show envy, right? And he tells us that, Peter tells us that if we follow these steps, our entrance to heaven is already open, right? And God has given us a process so that we don't become useless like a baby. He says in verse 8, For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. These qualities will keep you from being useless or ineffective. So, if you listen to God, you will remain useful and grow. So then you have to ask yourself, do my actions represent my faith in Jesus? Right? Because everyone's heard that actions speak louder than words. And I'm not talking about a Sunday morning where we're all greeting each other, being nice and friendly and all that. I'm talking about a Wednesday, random Thursday afternoon. After work, you're stressed. Do your actions represent your faith in Jesus? Let's go into verse 9. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this there, is, there, is, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So he's saying here explicitly, we have to always be working on our faith. And he says, if, if we don't, then we've forgotten who's cleansed us. We've forgotten who Jesus was and what he did for us. And he's telling us that we won't get the full Jesus experience if we don't keep working on our faith. If we read in verse 10, he says, Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. So... When you go hiking, 
you're not just climbing a hill, you're climbing, you're climbing a mountain, right? There's gonna be obstacles. There's, you know, rocks and panthers or stuff like that. It's, it's stuff that block your, block your path as you're going on. And the thing is that, like, it, it, it's true. It's like, it's harder to climb a mountain than it is to climb a hill, and it's much more impressive, right? And the thing is that Peter is telling us that these obstacles in this way to climb this mountain is the full Jesus experience, right? And to be honest, it'd be boring. Without these things in our way, it'd be boring, like, to just climb a rock. So just like the mountain, if we keep pushing forward and we consistently work on doing what we want to do, we can't fall. And he says it directly. He says, um, verse 10 again at the end, if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. He, don't say, he doesn't say you'll fall and you'll get back up. He says you will never fall if you're consistently working on these qualities. So be consistent so that one day you can be in heaven with Jesus. So am I constantly working on my faith or am I just letting it roll? Let's go into verse uh, 12. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as, long as I am in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder. Since I know that the putting off my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made it clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able to at any time recall these things. What he's saying here is simple. He's saying to share the truth of Jesus. Right? He tells us that he will die soon. And he knows it. Jesus made this clear to him. Yet he chooses to spread the truth of Jesus. He tells, he tells us in uh, verse 14, Since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me, and I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able to recall these things. So, as an older sibling, right, I always have to remind my younger siblings, like, don't do this or don't do that. Remind them of the rules. Tell them, you know, what to do, right? And, and if you put it here, Peter's kind of being an older brother to these people he's talking to. And he's reminding them who Jesus is. He's reminding them of these things that Jesus said. And, and he's doing it out of love. And you know he's doing it out of love because a lot of people in their last days, you know, like if I ask you, like, what would you do in your last days? You might say, oh, I go skydiving. I go bungee jumping. I do this and this. But Peter's saying he's making it clear that this is what he should do. And it's spread the truth of Jesus. And he does this as a reminder to them. You know, and what he's doing here is he's proving that he is at that loving stage. He has the faith, right? He has the holiness. He likes them, and he's proving it. He's proving his love to them. He's telling them this is like, this is the steps that you need to do, and this is what I've done. He's telling them that he's there. So, just as an older brother tells his siblings how to be good, right? Peter's encouraging them to do these things that Jesus told him. And if you think about the, com the commission that we say at the end of church every Sunday, you know, it, you know, it says, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. He doesn't say, go therefore and make disciples Sunday morning. There's one thing, like, there's one like command he gives in there, that's go and make disciples. He tells us to go and do this. So we should consistently remind others and ourselves who Jesus really was. And so, like, are you spreading the truth of who Jesus was? Are you telling people what he did for you, for others? And if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, Michael's going to be doing a sermon series on that, you know, a little sneak peek coming up. 
So to wrap it all up, I encourage you not to be a useless baby. All right? <laughs> and to do, do God's work as he intended it. You've given, you're doing, you have the recipe. Follow the recipe that he's given you. And also know that faith is not just a one-step thing. That recipe isn't just one step. There's different steps to it. And you just you grow with it. And while you're doing that, work on your faith. And then finally, share the truth of Jesus. Tell people who gave you this recipe. These things will like, guide you to be more useful to not just your community, but God and his kingdom. So you won't be a baby. Because you can be in heaven and someone still has to change your diaper. So if there's one thing that you hear today out of my mouth is that we must show commitment to Jesus. We must. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this guidance you've given us, Lord, this war that you've given us, that you allow us to read and you allow us to share. Lord, if there's anything I said today that, you know, is my own opinion or anything like that, I ask that to be forgotten quickly. We thank you for what you've given us and what you continue to give us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <laughs> Um, thank you, Logan, for your preparation, your ministry this morning. The church is only ever one generation away from closing. And the youth are not the future of the church. The youth are the church today. Um, I don't know if you've ever thought about the fact that the sound is like running and stuff or like that there's a, a percussion element like that is the youth bringing their gifts to serve the body. Um, and so uh, my job um, as a youth pastor is to, is to identify gifts and equi equip and kind of push them to continue to grow um, in what they have. My friends, that also is my job as your pastor. The work of ministry that Neighborhood Church does in this community will not be me. It will be what the Spirit of God does in you and through you. And so uh, receive the encouragement and the exhortation from a younger brother this morning to grow and be increasing and do the work. Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control. Self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. If there's a, a first step you need to take, if you are like, I don't have faith, I don't trust Jesus, I, I would be honored to introduce you to Jesus. If there's a next step you need to take and you're not quite sure how to do that, um, then that's what I'm here for. That literally is my job. So please make it hard on me this week and let me help you figure out what your next step with Jesus is. Um, but let's just take a couple of minutes and connect with him. Um, let's spend some time in prayer and see how God's speaking this morning before we close together in singing.